It's a special day on the homestead. Hi everybody, thanks so much for stopping by the homestead. My name is Sarah from Living Traditions Homestead and today is a very special day. Uh, there are a lot of reasons why today could be very special, um, but the very most important thing about today is that it is Samantha's birthday. Uh, she turns 11 today, and I wanted an opportunity to share with you guys one of the very most special traditions that we have on the homestead, and that re revolves around birthdays. Um, normally, you know, the birthdays are more special for the kids, and um, so uh, I guess it's a bigger deal for them, um, and they really uh, love the things that we do here for them on the homestead and as a family to celebrate their birthday. Um, so I just wanted a chance to kind of let you guys into the family, let you guys into the homestead, include you on the excitement and the planning and the preparations. Um, and so let me just kind of tell you what we have in store this evening. Now the kids are at school um, and uh, they should be home in about an hour and 20 minutes so I need to get a move on. But um, you know the first thing that, that uh, they look forward to is uh, they look forward to picking out the main meal for the day uh, which around our homestead is uh, supper. And uh, they, can, they get to pick Anything they want, it needs to be home cooked. Uh, we don't do restaurants anymore. We don't do birthday parties at Chuck E. Cheese or whatever. Um, we don't really do birthday parties anymore. It's just a family celebration. Uh, so that's the first excitement. They get to pick what we have for dinner and it's their choice. Um, then they get to pick what kind of cake they want for their birthday and then I make that cake for them. Um, and then we just have a celebration evening with um, a few gifts and cards that they've received in the mail um, and just really have a good time together as a family. Um, they are both looking forward to it, um, and I, but I need to get started. Um, so Samantha has chosen a birthday cake. Uh, she has chosen a double layer chocolate cake with chocolate whipped cream frosting. Now, just to let you in on a little secret about our family, none of us likes frosting. We don't like frosting. It's too sugary for us. It's too rich for us. Every single one of us would prefer to like scrape that frosting off of our piece of cake and just like blob it there on our plate and then just put it right in the garbage can. Um, so over the years, I have substituted frosting with homemade whipped cream. Uh, not Cool Whip, homemade whipped cream. And so today I'm going to be making that for Samantha's birthday cake and I'm going to make chocolate whipped cream, um, which is a little bit more complicated than just regular whipped cream. So I'm going to take you along uh, for that and I'm going to take you along with making her homemade birthday cake today. Um, she has chosen for our meal to have roasted butternut squash topped with a chicken and rice dish and topped with melted cheddar cheese. So that will be the main entree for her uh, birthday tonight. Um, and you know, let, let me just say how absolutely blessed Kevin and I are to have children that have such mature palates. Um, our kids are wonderful at eating almost everything that we put in front of them. Uh, they've been like that since they were very little. Uh, to be honest, I um, attribute that to us really never letting them get away with saying they don't like something. Um, in our house, it's always been the rule that if you don't like something, that's okay. You just need to continue having at least one or two bites of it every time we serve it. And to be honest with you, because of that, our kids like almost everything. Um, I can't think of one thing that Samantha doesn't like to eat. Uh, she actually even likes sardines and uh, just some of the even weird things that I won't even go near. Um, and, some, and Grace, I think the only thing I can think of that she doesn't like is Brussels sprouts, but she's a good sport about them. When I serve them, she'll have at least one whole Brussels sprout. So anyway, I'm going to get started. I need to get the beginning of this chocolate whipped cream done first. Um, 
Now, the base of this is cocoa powder, sugar, and cream, whipping cream. Uh, whipping cream needs to be very cold when you whip it, um, but in order to get the chocolate and the sugar in there and dissolved, I need to warm it up in a little bit of the cream first to dissolve the sugar and mix in the cocoa powder, but then that needs to cool um, so that it is the same temperature as the rest of the cream, and then I'll, I'll mix that all together and whip it. So I have this pot. I'm going to use it on the stove to warm this up. I have a heavy whipping cream here, um, and I am going to put one cup of whipping cream in there because I'm only going to use a small amount of the cream to make the chocolate part, and then I'll mix it all together. I don't want four cups of cream to have to cool back down in the refrigerator. Um, it's going to be a lot easier to just do cool down one cup of cream. Okay, so there's that. And we're going to put in a half a cup of sugar. Now I use CNA sugar at home because it is non-GMO uh, cane sugar. That's non-GMO certified. Uh, the other uh, sugar in the store, most of it is um, beet sugar, and beet sugar is, or sugar beets are a GMO product. So I'm just going to add that. And I'm going to add one quarter cup of cocoa powder. Now I normally don't buy Hershey's cocoa powder, but I'll tell you a secret. Uh, we had friends over um, and they brought a chocolate cake and the chocolate cake was homemade and it was made with Hershey cocoa and they also made a frosting that used uh, Hershey's cocoa and um, I'm not sure if I've had anything that tasted so wonderful in my entire life. So I thought that this is a special enough occasion for me to get the Hershey's cocoa and use it for Samantha's birthday. Okay, so one quarter cup of Hershey's powdered baking cocoa. And then I'm gonna whisk that together. I'm gonna whisk this together. And then I'm gonna put it on the stove and start warming it up until I can tell that all of the sugar is dissolved. Okay, so that was very fast. Um, I had this on the stove for about two or three minutes while I was whisking, um, and then I switched to a rubber spatula, um, and I had the heat on like medium, I think, and just basically warmed it up while I was stirring and dissolving that sugar and incorporating the cocoa powder, and um, it is just gorgeous, and I, I took a little taste, and it tastes amazing. Um, I hope that you can see how beautiful that is. Uh, but now I need this to get cooled in the refrigerator. So. Time for me to get started on the cake. So remember I said what an amazing cake it was that we had uh, when a friend brought it over and it was made all with Hershey's cocoa? Well, we are going to be making the Hershey's chocolate cake that's on the back of the container. Uh, so, you know, as much as I would like to take credit for this amazing recipe, it is not mine. Uh, but it will be tasty and I'm excited to make it. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to do um, is just put all the dry ingredients in my mixing bowl and mix it up a little bit. Okay, I'm going to set this aside. And get my wet ingredients ready. I have everything for now in the dry ingredients and get it going a little bit and then I'm going to switch it to my mixer. Now one thing about this recipe that I noticed that is just a little bit strange compared to any other one that I've made is that um, after you mix it here for a while, ooh, I'm getting crazy, getting crazy, getting ingredients all over. One thing that's different about this is that in a little bit we'll add a cup of boiling water. So I need to get that going. Okay, I'm going to switch this to my mixer. I let this batter uh, stir on medium speed in the mixer for two minutes and in the meantime I was heating up some water in the death box 
if uh, you guys ever watch Off Grid with Doug and Stacy, I think that they call their mic not their microwave because they don't have a microwave, but I think they refer to microwaves as death boxes. So I have death box water here. Uh, it was just easy for me to do. Um, and so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I think first I'm gonna scrape along the sides and make sure that nothing, you know, is stuck on the sides or in the bottom, and then I'll add the boiling water. Um, it says on the uh, package to expect for it to be a thin batter, uh, so I'm not going to worry about that. Here we go. And I'm going to turn that back on. Slow at first. And then as it um, isn't so watery, then I'll kick up the speed a little bit. That is all stirred up nicely. Uh, so now it's time to get these in the baking pans. Now, when I was a little girl, um, I noticed something when my grandma baked cakes. Uh, she would always, well, she would grease her pans, which I've done. I've sprayed this with a little olive oil and she would put a little bit of uh, wax paper on the bottom of her, um, her cake pans. Um, and I've used parchment paper. I don't want to use wax paper because I don't want wax in my cake. Uh, but I don't think they had parchment paper back then. So I have just put a little strip of uh, parchment paper in the bottom of each of these cake pans. I've sprayed them both. Now my oven is preheated at 350. So I just need to pour the batter into these pans, trying hard to split it evenly. Um, and then get these in the oven. There we go. Let's get these in the oven. And we are going to bake these for 30 to 35 minutes on 350. They're both done. Well, I'll tell you. I'm feeling pretty unstoppable. Uh, while I was waiting for the cakes to get done, I got the chicken ready to put in the oven. I got the squash ready to put in the oven. I put away the clean dishes. I washed the dirty dishes. And uh, here they are, voila, all done. So I'm gonna let them cool right here on the counter for about 10 minutes before I take them out of the pan. Uh, and then I'll cool them on these uh, cooling racks until they're completely cool. Um, and at that point is when I'll whip the whipped cream and frost the cake and all that kind of stuff. So in the meantime, I need to get dinner in the oven and get that going. So see you back in a few. Okay, the cakes are cool. So it's time for me to make the whipped cream uh, that we will put in between the layers and then frost the entire cake, cake with. Um, the, the chocolate mix that I made um, is also cooled off. And when I took it out of the... Um, refrigerator, I stirred it and it seemed like there were some lumps in there so with my spatula I just kind of pressed out um, as many of the lumps as I can um, and uh, it seems fine now. So I have uh, three cups of whipping cream I'm going to put in my mixer bowl <clears throat> and then I'm going to add the chocolate cream mixture that I made earlier And I'm going to get that in my mixer and start whipping it up um, with this whisk. Now I want to make sure that these peaks are very stiff because I want to use it to frost a cake. But if I go too far, then we'll turn into chocolate flavored butter. And I sure don't want that. This is looking pretty good. Tastes good too. I think I'll go just a little tad bit more. See how it goes. Okay, I'm really afraid to make chocolate flavored butter. So we're gonna be done 
And I'm going to take this out and start frosting the cake. Now the fun begins. I have one of the cakes on a little cake plate here. And I'm just going to put a nice glob of the whipped cream in the, in, on the top of this. This will be the, the um, cream in the middle. And I don't have one of those fancy like frosting knives or whatever. I just use a butter knife. So I'm just going to spread that evenly across the top of this. I'm not a professional cake decorator or cake baker by any means, but I do all right. Okay, so I'm going to put the next layer on top. Hopefully it goes okay. Here. Press it on there a little bit. Doot, doot. And now, try to clean up some of these bits and just start putting it on here. Into the fridge until it's time for candles. Okay, Samantha, your birthday dinner. Why don't you go ahead and tell us what you chose for your birthday dinner. So we have some homegrown butternut squash with some herbed rice and some chicken with some cheddar cheese on top. So is it everything that you were hoping it would be? Yep. Awesome. No, because she hasn't tried it yet. Right, huh? I hope it is. I think we need to... Get a bite here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Get some chicken and some squash. Mm. That's super good. Super good? Mm -hmm. Well, all right, best is yet to come. Mm -hmm. Birthday cake is yet to come. Let's dig in. Okay, it's cake time. We've got this special cake that you wanted, Samantha, chocolate cake with chocolate whipped cream frosting. It's going to be amazing. One, two, three. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Samantha. Happy birthday to you. Okay, blow them out before they melt all the whipped cream. Awesome. Did you make a good wish? Don't tell yep. us so you won't forget it. Okay, don't tell us that it was for me to win the Powerball this week. <laughs> there, look at how beautiful that is on the inside. Okay, Samantha. Okay. Test it out. What I haven't told you guys yet is that I used Hershey Cocoa. What? Whoa, you got actual Hershey yep. cocoa? Uh huh. I splurged. Mm. <laughs> we get bites now because you had your first bite. Mm -hmm. I already so had a bite. Good. Yeah, he Dad. did. I saw him. He couldn't wait. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Mm. Mom. All right. Mm. There you go. Happy birthday, Samantha. We love you. Happy birthday, Samantha. <laughs> All right, you guys, thank you so much for stopping by the homestead today. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, Samantha, I think, is having a good birthday so far. So if you enjoyed this video, uh, go ahead and uh, give us a thumbs up. Uh, also, uh, any questions or comments, leave those down below. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button before you leave. And uh, until next time, you guys, thanks for stopping by the homestead, and God bless. Thank you so much for stopping by the homestead today. We really appreciate everybody wanting to be part of our lives. Join us for new videos every day, Monday through Friday. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button below. And also, don't forget to check out the videos over here on the side. And until next time, thanks for stopping by the homestead, and God bless.